Good evening. Rolex is delighted to welcome you to the 20th anniversary of the Rolex Mentor and Protégé Arts Initiative. We hope you enjoy this unique and inspiring journey.
since the beginning of time, there's only darkness around us. So what do we do? We light a fire. And then suddenly things are revealed. And that's where storytelling comes into place. Art is about communicating. Art is a spiritual practice. It's a fight. And that's what really art is about. Artists used to learn their craft by working with someone who knew how to do it. Rolex is making it possible to work in this way again. I like the idea of sharing my experience, creating this continuity back to the past. If it works between the mentor and the protege, you could be generating new artistic visions for the future generations. This is something that we need. It's something that spiritually um, we can't do without. Κυρίες και κύριοι, καλησπέρα σας. Καλώς ορίσατε. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. My name is Maria Nofpliotou. You have just heard from the Greek a cappella choir chorus. I would like to thank them for their traditional Greek welcome. I was honored when I was asked to participate in this celebration of the 20th anniversary of the Rolex Mentor and Protégé Arts Initiative. And I am delighted that Rolex chose to hold this event in Athens. I was intrigued to learn that for more than 20 years, the Rolex Mentoring Program has been pairing young talents with established artists for mutual learning and exchange. It allows young artists to reach their full potential and it connects our past, present and future by inspiring a new generation of artists. And these young artists are now themselves starting to share their knowledge with others. I know from my own experience in the theatre how important it is to have role models, people we admire and who can guide us along the way. Tonight, we will learn about the impact and the legacy of this prestigious program. We will hear from both mentors and protégés about their dreams, aspirations and insights gained through their unique creative exchanges, focusing on four themed chapters of discovery. So far, an astonishing 63 major artists have served as mentors. They are among the world's greatest artists and represent the best creative minds in the world today. These mentors have been joined by 63 protégés in all art forms, theater, visual arts, dance, literature, music, architecture, and film. Tonight, we will see the impact of this program across the globe. We begin with the theater and open category disciplines to explore how a mentor can open up new perspectives and possibilities for up-and-coming artists. Julie Tamer, Patrick Chéreau, Sir Peter Ho, and Philida Lloyd are just some of the pioneering and groundbreaking artists who have served as mentors. Theatre mentors and protégés have spanned the globe. From Argentina to Poland, from South Africa to Canada, and from Lebanon to France. Protégés have observed and exchanged knowledge and adventures with unparalleled access to legends in their field. From spending days on one lighting cue to hours on one single hand gesture, from immersing themselves in intricate ensemble processes to seeing how you shape plays and musicals on some of the biggest stages in the world. In 2020, a new open category was established 
with a Pulitzer, Grammy, Emmy, and Tony Award-winning composer, lyricist, and creator of the global hit Hamilton, Lin Manuel Miranda, as its inaugural mentor. Now, I am honored to introduce someone I have worked with and whom I admire greatly. I have had the privilege of performing with him here in Greece and abroad. He was the first Rolex Theatre mentor in 2002, the visionary American theatre director Robert Wilson. Good evening. As the first Rolex theater mentor for the Rolex Protégé program, I'd like to talk about theater. Theater is unique in society. It's a forum, ideally, where anyone can come together come together for a brief period of time and share something. One can sit next to someone who has completely different ideas, different political ideas, religious ideas from one's own. It's an ancient forum, a place where we can share ideas from the past, where we can share ideas for the future. It can bring our local communities together, and it can bring our global communities together. It can be a window to the world. The Rolex Mentor Protégé Program gives the older generation of established artists time to think and reflect on their own work and establish a dialogue with younger artists. It's this dialogue that's most important. It makes our lives richer. Theater is unique because it brings all the arts together. Architecture, painting, dance, light, literature, music, film, and philosophy. All the arts can be seen under this umbrella of what we call theater. It's opera in the ancient Latin sense of the word, meaning opus, all inclusive. I followed the Rolex Art Initiative program since its inception, when I was first invited to join the first advisory board in 2001. I'm grateful to Rolex for reviving the traditional concept of mentoring. What better place than Athens to celebrate the Western birthplace of theater? I think of what Martha Graham, the great American choreographer said, as the first line of her autobiography, I am a dancer. I learn by practice. 
Here is a selection of friends and colleagues from across all disciplines who were Rolex mentors. Let's have a listen to what they have to say about the power of mentoring and opening up possibilities for future generations. Hi, Maria. Having a mentor is a gift. Stephen Sondheim, who recently passed away, always encouraged me to reach out. He would just say, like, write me, call me. My only regret is I took too long to realize he really meant it. But once I started to really lean in and ask him questions, he had answers. I was fortunate enough of working for Eduardo Sutomoro, who's, I think, one of the greatest architects in the world. For me, Eduardo was a really important character. And it was the first time an architect had been really open with me. Those little nuggets of things that he would, how he would look at something, how he would say something affected him, were profound for me. Having somebody who really cares about you, who sees promise in the work, but also sees where the work needs to go or has the possibility of going, who sees the potential, and then who's willing to work with you to achieve that. It's rare. Most of us don't really have the privilege of having a mentor. It's not like I was going to med school or law school or you know, some other profession where you know it's like a path. The art's different. The process, most of the times, I would say, is more important than the result because you learn, you become a different person. You take new ideas from people you work with. Remaining an eternal student as an artist is fundamental because otherwise you're just iterating tropes that went out of fashion. You've got to be looking for the future. I mean, Ravi Shankar, for instance, all he told me was, you're playing with me, but you're not watching me. And so you have no idea what I'm doing and whether I'm looking at you or wanting to interact with you. Just that one little lesson, he opened the whole world for me. Getting recognition is so vitally important. Someone paying real attention to what you're doing. If you've got something, you've got to really, really work at it. If you have that talent, you have to use it. I'm delighted tonight to introduce our first live performance. Please welcome two former music protégés, American violist David Aaron Carpenter and Spanish conductor Joseph Caballier Dominique, who will be conducting Pizzola's Primavera Potina accompanied by the El Sistema Greek Orchestra. Thank <laughs> you. 
does Rolex select the mentors? And more importantly, how do the mentors choose their protégés? Rolex convinces an advisory board of artists and creative leaders to choose the mentors who are invited to take part. Then expert nominating panels seek out potential protégés. In each discipline, nominators narrow their selection to three or four finalists who are presented to the mentor who makes his or her choice. So the selection process is long and rigorous. Our next themed chapter is choosing a protégé. Let us now explore the visual arts and dance categories. In the visual arts, mentors have included David Hackney, John Baldessari, Olafur Eliasson, and Carrie Mae Wims. They have shared journeys from Cape Town to Colombia, from Paris to Tokyo, and from London to Nevada. How do you capture light on a canvas? How do you manipulate a giant piece of bronze or a small piece of string? How do you gain representation by a gallery or handle your first museum show? In career-defining advice, protégés have re-examined their artistic styles, collaborated together on a print series, and pushed the boundaries of creativity at the Venice Biennale. In dance, Rolex mentors have included some of the world's greatest contemporary choreographers and practitioners, including William Forsyth, Trisha Brown, and Alexei Ratmansky. Protégés from China, Ethiopia, Togo, the United States, Australia, Brazil, South Africa, and Senegal have accompanied their mentors in multiple locations. The mentoring has afforded experiences such as being strapped in a harness to walk the walls of the Whitney Museum, dancing on rooftops along the High Line in Chelsea, New York, making their choreographic debut and touring the world as part of the Mentors Dance Company. To present the visual arts and dance disciplines, Please welcome two visionary women in the chosen fields, American visual arts mentor Joan Jonas and Canadian dance mentor Crystal Pite. Good evening. When I agreed to participate in the Rolex program, I was interested in a protege from another country and context. When I met my protege, Tao, who was from Vietnam, I felt that this was someone that I could communicate with. Her proposal was intriguing, wonderful, beautifully written, and interesting for me. I saw the potential of her practice, and I felt I could help her. During our time together, we traveled and saw each other's work. She spent time with me in New York and in Europe. She joined my workshop in Santander, Spain, for instance. She also joined me as I developed work in Rome and Kochi, India, where she could do her own research in relation to her project concerning cultural history of Vietnam. Our projects existed side by side. This process was not about teaching, but to indicate by example, for instance, visiting Tao in Vietnam, I met other young artists there through her, which was important for both of us. By visiting Vietnam, I experienced her work in the context of her situation. We had a wonderful time together, and Tao and I became friends. I have been really happy at how successful she has become, and I'm very proud of her. 
Other mentors have had different experiences, but I believe they have all been rewarding. To support young artists, as Rolex does through this program, is so inspiring and leads to innovations. Let's see what other mentors have said about choosing a protege. Hey, bonjour, ça va? Hi. Aurelio. How are you, man? I'm fine. Good. <laughs> Good. Okay. What I want is totally simple for me. Soul. Do what you feel. Well, what interests me is somebody who is self-starting, is energetic and will go out and create opportunities because that's what I was like. We pick people partly because they have some features of ourselves that we recognize. I was really interested in choose somebody who has already experienced, not completely somebody who is new or naive, absolutely. And at the same time, somebody who hasn't really had so much experience that this will be useless. He just needs a little push. I was interested in someone who would easily be moving through the mediums that I can have a dialogue with, like a colleague. I think it came down to who I felt comfortable with, somebody I had to spend a fair amount of time with, and something where we would be able to have good conversations. I knew exactly what I wanted. A very curious human being, open for new experiments, and possesses that kind of intelligence to learn from things that are established. And I think it is extremely important that a young architect with talent who wants to do something for the people. This, of course, I appreciate a lot. I think Aurelio is talented. <laughs> He bring also, you know, something I didn't really know before. On one song, on one meeting, I have the feeling of hundreds of people. This is really big for me, touch me. I tell him, you know, you here maybe around to learn something, but I'm sure I'm gonna learn a lot from you. I think he's the one November 2017. To my dear, as yet unknown, future protege, you are a choreographer, a creator, and a leader in equal measure. You're a maverick and an improviser. You're curious, earnest, rigorous, and kind. You embody what you learn and care about. You love to move and to be moved. You have stamina and courage. You're asking big, unanswerable questions. You accept the discomfort of doubt. And you're wondering what dance can do in a world that needs radical change and healing. You place your intelligence and your talent at the service of your community, and it's in your nature to take this experience of mentorship and to pay it forward. And I 
I will ace it, and I will fake it right in front of you. I will take clever shortcuts, and I will spend way too much time on the wrong things. I will fuss, stress, tinker, overthink, nurture, and deliver. I will doubt and struggle and fail. I will be nice. I will be late. I will procrastinate. I will tell you everything I know. And I will stand with you, humbled in the not knowing, awestruck by how the dancing body can sometimes give shape to the soul. I will be terrified. And you can watch me show up anyway. I will talk. And hopefully, I will remember to listen because I have a lot to learn from you. Sincerely, Crystal. I hand this invocation to the team, the amazing team at Rolex. They take it and run. They search the globe. They find her. She answers the call. Hudia. Hudia Torre dances into my life and changes it forever. So, what can dance do in a world that needs radical change and healing? I know that Huria lives that question every day, and it's at the heart of her latest creation, a work she has built in collaboration with young adults in Canada, in France, in Senegal, and right here in Greece. I love how Huria has enlisted young people to grapple with ideas and issues that are important for all of us. From these conversations, she has excavated material, meaning, and inspiration for the piece that you're about to see. Dear friends, we are thrilled to present an excerpt from the most recent creation of Julia Torre, Oro. Thank you. 
Orson Welles is the one who said, you can learn anything you need to know about filmmaking, quote unquote, that's camera, sound, whatever, in four hours. It has nothing to do with anything. It has to do what you want to say. The most valuable thing that a mentor can do is not so much to influence, but to give permission to try something unexpected. To say, actually, your own ideas are good. Look at them and follow them. We all have to face all the practicalities of life, but we need to find a way to preserve ourselves. My role is to show different things that maybe he already knows or wants to hear but hasn't brought out to the forefront. Finding their own vocabulary and their own way of being in the world. What moves me most is the narrative that they bring that I didn't write. This is something that becomes clear when someone has that ability to tell something that is beyond my choreography. My attitude is artists are created, not made. To be an artist, you just have to find your path. Él me dijo, yo no te digo cuál es tu lugar. El lugar lo tienes que encontrar vos. I feel like more strong and more confident with myself. That's for sure. Veo como un camino largo, ¿viste? Muchas horas de trabajo, mucha persistencia. This whole thing is just an invitation to be brave. And that's what's inspirational to me, to just find a way to keep going. Believing in that inner core of that drive of what you want to say and do and not let anyone or anything chip away at that or tarnish it. Because it's something special and precious. As we have seen, the mentoring relationship is instrumental in how the protégés hone and define their voices as artists. In our next theme chapter, Finding a Voice, we move on to the literature and music disciplines and explore how protégés have been encouraged to discover and trust their own unique artistic expression. The literature mentors are some of the most respected authors today and include Nobel Prize winners writing in a variety of forms and languages, including French, Spanish, English, Portuguese and German. They include Toni Morrison, Mario Vargas Llosa, Wally Soinka and Margaret Atwood. During the mentorship, protégés have completed entire novels, gone birdwatching, taught university classes at NYU, accompanied their mentors on tours and to literature festivals in places like Trinidad, Nigeria, Bulgaria and Munich. And in music, mentors have included Sarah Colin Davis, Jesse Norman, Philip Glass, and Zakir Hussein. Mentors and protégés have interacted on the road, in studios, at homes, and in concerts from Spain, Egypt, Portugal, Finland, Peru, England, and the United States. Ranging from classical to rock, jazz to ambient, opera to composing for the stage, the viola, drums, guitar, and the human voice have been pushed to their limits. From almost blowing out the windows of the New York Public Library, to composing original works for internationally renowned orchestras, to performing in a dress made out of 100 little speakers at Carnegie Hall in New York, Music protégés have created original works under their mentors' watchful eyes. Please welcome literature mentor and protégé, 
Tahar Benjaloun and Adam Awame, and in music, Gilberto Gil and his protege, Dina Elwedidi. Bonsoir. Être mentor, c'est revenir à l'école de la modestie. Being a mentor is a refresher course in humility. J'ai appris d'Edem au même titre que il a appris de mon expérience. I learned from Edem just as he learned from my experience. Nos imaginaires étaient face à face. Il fallait ouvrir les portes et changer nos façons d'aborder l'écriture. Our imaginations came face to face. We had to open up to one another and share our approach to writing. Être mentor, c'est être responsable de ce qu'on peut éveiller chez un jeune écrivain. Being a mentor means being responsible for kindling the spirit of a young writer. Le talent, ça ne s'enseigne pas. Ça se cultive, ça se travaille tout le temps. Talent cannot be taught. It must be nurtured and worked on constantly. C'est ce que Edem et moi avions essayé de faire durant la période que le programme Rolex a mis à notre disposition. That is what Adam and I tried to, to do during our time with the Rolex program. Le travail consistait à se lire mutuellement. Nous l'avions fait avec joie, avec plaisir, avec générosité. Our mission was to read one another's work, which we did with real joy, pleasure, and generosity. Merci au programme Rolex d'avoir permis une telle rencontre qui reste pour moi une chose inoubliable. I am very grateful to the Rolex program for having enabled our time together, which will never, which I will never forget. And in this magnificent journey with Tar from France to Tangier, I understood that it is a matter of, by immersing ourselves in the world around us, fighting the fear of the order to write and live fully. Gilberto? I think we as older artists and mentors have a responsibility to give young talents experience they would not have had otherwise. We need to give them space and time to think for themselves and to experiment. Younger voices need to be supported and be allowed to make mistakes. The only way for young artists to gain confidence is for us, the older generation, to take time to listen. When I was a Rolex mentor, it was interesting for me to have someone, Dina, from a different musical culture. She was a young beginner, full of fresh energy and great expectations. This meant a lot for my own curiosity, as she represented a completely different musical and human universe. She also reminded me of myself in the early years of my career in terms of struggle and confrontation. It's important 
to celebrate every moment of different moments of difference between different generations. I was young and searching and developing my artistic musical identity. So having a great artist like Gilberto Gil as a mentor helped me in my own journey. He was one of the biggest blessings I had in my life. He exposed me to the international music industry. I was so lucky that Jill gave me also access to join him backstage and on the stage and also in his tours. I learned massively from that. We also had so much fun and I have beautiful memories. He came to Cairo and visited me and I visited him in Salvador Bahia. These were unforgettable moments. I also want to say something about Gilberto. It's the first time he is hearing me say this. Jill is one of the most devoted, passionate, and giving persons I have ever seen in his art and to people around him. So thank you so much, Gilberto. Oh, thank you. Tonight, we celebrate the Rolex program over the last two decades. And we also take a moment to honor the lives of our visionary mentors who are no longer with us. How fortunate that they give so generously of their time and knowledge, their impact lives on.
We have seen this evening testimonies from mentors about opening up possibilities for young artists, choosing their protégés, and helping young talents find their voice. We now look at the impact of the Rolex mentor and protégé community on future generations. Over two decades, the Rolex program has formed an expanding global community of artists who can be relied on to transmit their art to future generations. And this transmission of knowledge makes a lasting contribution to the arts over time and has global resonance. The Rolex protégés now form an amazing community to creative minds and collaborators that crosses borders and disciplines. Our next theme chapter is then and now, and we will focus on how the passing down of knowledge across generations can help make and build new communities and change lives. Let us look at our final two disciplines of the evening, architecture and film. In architecture, Rolex mentors and protégés have collaborated on projects in London, South Korea, and in an area of Japan devastated by the 2011 tsunami. Mentors have included Kazuyo Sejima, Peter Zumto, and Sir David Ajaye. Protégés have spearheaded master plans for entire neighborhoods from London to Lebanon and examined the similarity of light and building materials between Portugal and Jordan. Rolex film mentors include some of the greatest filmmakers in recent history, including Zhang Yimou, Alfonso Cuaron, and Spike Lee. Mentors and protégés have met and worked side by side on film sets in India, Peru, Mexico, the US, Canada, and China. From sitting in editing rooms for hours, watching their mentors give notes to some of the world's greatest actors, seeing how to handle enormous budgets or making things work with few resources, the protégés have been up close learning to tell stories with visionary filmmakers. Please welcome the architecture mentor, Sir David Chipperfield, who two days ago received the Pritzker Prize here in Athens, and award-winning international filmmaker, Mira Nair. Good evening. As we look around our cities, our towns, and our countryside, it is clear that our attempt as architects to help create a more considerate environment based on needs and the quality of life, is struggling against other forces. Forces that don't put environmental or societal responsibilities at the front of our decision-making process. The urgent crises of climate change and social inequality provide the profession of architecture with the incentive and the mandate to realign priorities in order to more, con more seriously confront the role that we can play in creating better environments and better quality of life. This forces us to reconsider our conventional approach to practice today for current and future generations. In this shift, we architects must find opportunities to come together as a profession to make more significant contributions to the world around us. Architecture is a profoundly collaborative profession and there is a vast community rich in talent, thinking, and energy that is eager to play a bigger role. Too often, the rivalrous nature of our own profession puts us in, a com in competition with one another rather than emphasizing our common purpose and shared responsibility. Mentoring is an opportunity to revitalize our approach 
to step outside our individual tasks, to share the lessons of our experience, and to reflect on the nature of practice. We must take this opportunity to consider the wider legacy that we are leaving to the next generation, connecting with the excitement, energy, and commitment that we find in our protégés. The Rolex Mentor and Protégé Arts Initiative is a unique opportunity to emphasize the importance of dialogue, exchange, and collaboration. Through this extraordinary initiative, I feel more optimistic than ever that we have the mandate and the capacity to, to change course towards creative, pro sorry, to change the course of creative professions defined by a common sense of purpose and by a commitment to engage with each other across generations and across communities. Thank you. Mir <clears throat> As the first Rolex mentor in film, and having been involved in this program almost since the beginning, I am honored to speak with you this evening. I come from India, steeped in the Guru Shishya tradition, the devotional thread between the teacher and the disciple, so movingly portrayed in one of our film protégés, film Chaitanya Tamhane's The Disciple, and the Rolex Arts Program is a continuing of that same tradition, and the impact has been profound. It has literally changed lives. It is unique, like no other arts program in the world, in providing close access to a mentor. It demystifies the process. It encourages. It prevents stagnation. It makes us believe that we are in a community of artists. No other organization is bringing artists from all across the world, all across the arts, and across generations, and not demanding anything in return, except the continuing of the flame of artistic expression. In the creative world, borders by necessity need to be fluid and porous. And now, more than ever, it is time for us to tell stories in which people can see themselves it takes courage to be original, and the heart must inform the brain, because there is not a single human imagination, but multiple imaginations. It was always time to tell our stories, but now is the time we will tell them our way, not through intermediaries. We must encourage younger artists to prepare to work hard, but allow spontaneous moments of inspiration to inform their creative work, to do what we think we cannot do. I told my protege 20 years ago that he needed to cultivate stamina, to be brave, and to prepare to be lonely. But fortunately, really, thanks to this program, all of us are a little less lonely. Let's now see what the protégés said about their mentorships and where they are today. <laughs> it's very nice to see you again. Oh my goodness, it feels like such a long time ago, and I think it's, it's probably because so much has happened since then. Es un momento tan especial, como que revive un momento tan trascendental en mi carrera. Esto marcó como una etapa en toda mi vida, porque finalmente me hizo establecerme. It's crazy. We talk almost once a week. He calls me his son, I call him like Papa. It was I think, more successful than either he or I could have ever imagined. Peter gave me ambition. Up until then, I sort of ambition as something that wasn't necessarily a good trait in someone but he was openly ambitious and i realized that one needed to be ambitious not as a person not on a personal level but for your work ça m'a permis un peu de mieux comprendre ce que je suis mieux comprendre mon rapport à l'écriture pour finalement revenir à l'essentiel non si è esaurito diciamo con l'anno poi di lavoro insieme Io sento verso di lui una gratitudine che avrò veramente per sempre.
Yo he recibido tanto en mi vida, me siento con mucha gratitud, que lo mínimo que yo puedo hacer es devolver a los jóvenes lo que yo he aprendido. Cuando you get inspired from someone, you can inspire someone else. Creo que ha sido como un claro mensaje de haber sido parte del programa y hay una gran responsabilidad de cómo ayudar a otra gente y empujar. What this program proposes is a different way of interaction. Anything can happen. And then it means that the work that is being done is different and it's exceptional and the audience gets to witness that. El potencial está en nuestra comunidad de 50 protegidos. Yo creo que wow, es lo explosivo de esto. All of the inspiration that bubbles out of a group of people who, for me, are like endlessly inspiring. It's just kind of like the pebble that makes the ripples in the pond. That's a pretty special thing to achieve in two decades. It is my great pleasure to introduce now the visionary of this program with her discreet charm and grace and extraordinary curating, the, the great Rebecca Irvin. Thank you. Thank you, Mira. I'd like to thank the Stavros Niarchos Foundation Cultural Center for hosting us here in this beautiful, beautiful place. And thank you to Athens also for, for receiving us so warmly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. More than 20 years ago, we at Rolex started looking into setting up a major new arts philanthropy. We wanted a program that was truly global. We wanted a program to, that would serve all the arts. And most importantly, we wanted to have impact. I think I can say that after 20 years, I believed we've achieved that goal. The Rolex Mentor and Protégé Arts Initiative has exceeded our expectations. Several things happened that surprised us. We originally thought that mentors would pass down their knowledge to the next generation in a top-down way. But from the beginning, mentors became in involved in the work of their protégés. They traveled to see them. They, uh, in some cases, actually collaborated with them or produced their work. And mentors told us that they were learning as much as their protégés. Then protégés began getting to know each other and collaborating across disciplines. They remained in touch and have supported and encouraged each other. And finally, as you've just seen, the protégés have felt a responsibility to pass on their knowledge and experiences and are themselves becoming mentors. The result has been an amazing community of creative minds that spans the globe. As you've also heard to date, 126 mentors and protégés have embarked on creative relationships. More than 1,000 young artists have been nominated for this program. Hundreds of experts have helped us find potential protégés and select them, and dozens of artists and creative leaders have served as advisors. And the protégés, whom we now call Rolex Arts Fellows, collectively have an impressive body of work. Over the course of their careers, before, during, and after their mentorships, the Rolex Fellows have produced 306 theater plays, operas, and live performances participated in 446 solo or group exhibitions in visual arts, created 96 choreographies, published 87 literary works, including novels, short stories, poetry, and screenplays. They performed or composed 195 works of music, including albums, performances, or film scores. They've carried out 154 architectural constructions, renovations, or studies and they have made or been involved with 
198 feature films, short films, documentary, and TV series. The gala this evening is part of Rolex Arts Festival celebrating 20 years of mentoring with dozens of public events in various locations across Athens. So we invite you to see some of the work of the Rolex Fellows over the next two days at the Athens Conservatoire, Benaki Piraeus, Megaron, and Emst in exhibitions, screenings, discussions, and performances. In conclusion, we're proud of the impact of the Rolex Mentoring Program. We're humbled by the generosity of the mentors and delighted with the enthusiasm and dedication of the protégés. To all our mentor protégé community from around the world, and to also to those teams within Rolex that I must mention who work so hard to make this program a success. Thank you. Now, I'm very pleased, it's my honor to introduce the person who, along with our board of directors, makes all this possible, the chief executive of Rolex, Jean-Frédéric Dufour. Wow, what a night. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Dear guest, dear mentor and protégé, it's a pleasure to be in Athens to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Rolex Mentoring Program. This adventure started with a unique idea, a gift of time to young artists, to help them to learn and grow alongside masters of their disciplines. For more than a century, we at Rolex have seen what happens when young people learn from those who came before them. They build on this knowledge to innovate, to create something original. In this way, progress is made. This is particularly true in the field of watchmaking, where know-how has been passed down through the century, centuries between masters and apprentices. This is what has enabled the art of watchmaking to be developed further and constantly perfected. Mentoring is the key to success. I am not an artist, but I wouldn't be standing here in front of you without having had a mentor in my life. A mentor helps us to find our real strengths and to reach our full potential, giving us the confidence and the freedom to be the best version of ourselves. I could give many examples of the success of the Rolex mentoring program, but one in particular strikes me. As you just learned, and as you may know, of course, 2023 is the special year as one of our mentors, Sir David Chipperfield, received the Prisoner's Christ two days ago in Athens. Again, Congratulations to him for his prestigious award. <laughs> Sir David designed our new U.S. headquarters in New York City, which is currently under construction and I'm sure will be the most beautiful on Fifth Avenue. For the Chipperfield team, in the, in the room, it is due to be delivered end of 25, and this is no pressure. <laughs> we are grateful to him for agreeing in 2016 and 2017 to mentor Simon Kretz. Their collaboration has explored how planning shapes the city and gives voice to the aspirations of its citizens. I met Simon a few days ago here in Athens, and he told me that he is currently reviewing planning for the Swiss highway network. And I tell you, this means a lot to me. He co-founded a company and now has 20 employees working under his leadership. That is a very concrete result and progress. Further evidence of the value of mentoring is right here before me. Congratulations, Simon.
as Rebecca said, and as you just saw it there on the screen, this program has become an international community with many hundreds of members who contribute to supporting aspiring artists to achieve their goals. Being a company driven by dreams like Rolex, the emotional dimension is also very important. This is where we have a strong link with the arts and why the company has made a long-term commitment to culture through partnerships with leading institutions and artists. With the Perpetual Arts Initiative, Rolex is committed to excellence and to helping pass our generation's artistic heritage to future generations. Every person who has been involved in the Rolex mentoring program has helped make it a force for good. We thank all the people worldwide who have assisted nominating mentors and protégés and acting as our artistic advisors. And we especially want to thank Rebecca Irvin, who has, wait, 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 it's not finished, it's not finished, who has led the initiative and deserves much praise for her stewardship and dedication. After 30 years with Rolex, she is departing the company at the end of this year for a new chapter in her life. We wish her well. Thank you, Rebecca. The first 20 years have seen the mentoring program flourish under the Rolex values of excellence, quality, consistency, and commitment. We want the next 20 years to achieve even more. It is time for change. There will be, sorry, there will always be a mentoring program, but it will be slightly different. We are reflecting on new ways to benefit rising talents on a global level. We have to consider that we are already 8 billion human beings on this planet. More than ever, we need to share a universal language in human art and genius that artificial intelligence will never be able to replace. The aim of our next mentoring program will be to unveil and disseminate this universal language to as many people as possible in order to inspire new generations and bring dreams and hope for a better world. I know it may sound very optimistic, but this is the big mission that we have set ourselves. Thank you very much. And now I am pleased to introduce our new music mentor, the foremost jazz vocalist in the world, Diane Reeves and her protege, Song Yi John, accompanied by Romeo Lubambo. Good evening, everyone. This has been an extraordinary night for me as um, I uh, start my journey as a mentor. I have to say that when it came time for me to make my selection, long story short, it was short. I had no problem. This young lady possesses the most extraordinary gifts. She already had refined and defined her instrument. As an improviser, she can boldly go with the best of them, creating and breathing life into spontaneous invention. She is a composer and arranger and a cultivator of sound, wordless sound that is able to reach inside and create that very precious experience as artists that we all want. That is that soul to soul experience. For me, I can offer you what I've lived, 
I can share with you. What I know, I will give to you. And what I think, I will offer. <laughs> this song that we're going to do this evening was written by Pat Metheny and it's called Minwano. And it's about the wind. And it is the perfect song to start our journey because we are both, both held right now in the winds of change. Da 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 da
Young, ladies and gentlemen, and my dearest, dearest friend, my brother from another mother, Homero Lubombo. Nelly I can do this all night. Nice. Of course. <laughs> yeah. oh. oh, my goodness. What a joy, what an experience to be surrounded by all these incredible artists. It's a wonderful, it's a sacred space for us all to be in, a place where our voices are heard and our voices can grow and where there is fertile, beautiful ground. Thank you so much, Rolex, for inviting me to be a part of this. It's going to be an amazing two years. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to continue on with this next piece that we hope that all of you will join in and sing. It's written by the great Bill Withers. This is Lean On Me. transformational, a journey that is both professionally and personally rewarding. I'm sure that it will be. We all need a friend to lean on at some time in our lives, someone who will be by our side, a brother or a sister, someone to take our hand and lead us forward. So I am thrilled to call on the brothers and sisters from the last two decades to come and join me on stage to help me finish this song. Please put your hands together for all of the beautiful mentors and protégés. <laughs> 